In this frantic, chaotic, and often cynical 20th century, a world scenario of social and environmental crises is the setting for a series of unusual events that have been appearing ever more frequently to speak to man's awareness. Those whose attention has been drawn to these events have been wondering whether the vision of reality as presented by science is real or the result of a dogma destined to crumble as events develop. In this context, a major role is attributed to unusual patterns that appeared in various crop fields in the early 80s, mostly wheat fields, in many parts of the world and above all in England. As the configuration started to appear in more and more fields and forming complex patterns, an increasing number of researchers became interested in the study of this phenomenon. Among them, the famous English engineer Colin Andrews, one of the main international experts of crop circles, and the German anthropologist Professor Michael Hessemann, a famous worldwide researcher of UFO and crop circles, will lead us to discover the peculiar features of this phenomenon. These investigators have contributed considerably to the study that is slowly shedding light on the secrets behind one of the most fascinating mysteries of our times the mystery of the crop circles. It seems incredible that the extraordinary phenomenon of the crop circles should appear each year at regular intervals in the same period and often in the same fields, as a result of which a trend of tourism of the circles has developed. Each year a swarm of enthusiasts and onlookers gathers in the British fields as if these configurations were a normal event. The regularity of the phenomenon is not found in other types of unusual phenomena which have engaged our attention, including the UFO sightings. Moreover, unlike the elusive nature of the UFO phenomenon, the characteristics of the crop circles are easy to identify and to analyse. The great thing about the crop circle phenomena in, in some ways is the, that so very often in investigating aerial phenomena, you rely upon the credibility of an eyewitness seeing a UFO. You are um, in the hands of their experience, their truthfulness or otherwise. It's a flinching glance. Here you have a phenomena which is recorded on the ground. You can go and you can touch it. You can measure it. You can analyze it. Thanks to this, it has been possible to establish its authenticity incontrovertibly. So, the indifference or the discredit of the international scientific community, of the mass media and of the institutions is apparently inexplicable. They act as if the phenomenon were the product of the fantasy of some fanatic or a prank and thus deprived of any social or scientific interest. An attitude that surely has valid but unknown motivation. We will try to find out what they are with the help of the experts. The first sporadic news about crop circles was heard in the 60s in Australia, only to become regular by the 70s. At first, they appeared as plain and small circles, and by the mid-80s, they appeared in composite groups. They constantly increased in number up to 1989 and spread worldwide, but mostly in southern England, in the counties of Wiltshire and Hampshire. In 1990 there was a quantum leap. Over 1,200 circles appeared. They came in complex patterns and different shapes and were therefore called pictograms. Their more marked symbolism has led the scientists to believe that this phenomenon carries a message. Offenbar is the phenomenon Certainly, the phenomenon has developed from a phase that wanted to catch our attention. And in which it was clear the connection with the UFO phenomenon into a new phase, the communication with symbols. The diameter of the crop circles varies from a few centimeters to a few meters, and some as much as 300 meters across have been found on surfaces measuring over 10,000 square meters. They mostly appear from spring to the end of summer, in other words, 
the time it takes the crops in the fields in which they appear to reach a certain height and maturity. The circles appear in various fields, plain tall grass, oilseed rape, barley, oats and, above all, wheat fields. Official science, in the person of scholars, or so they are defined, has explained the crop circles as the work of man, or the result of natural causes. At first, this phenomenon was attributed to the gags of pranksters, to whirlwinds, to something that is best known as mushrooms, or to other more or less credible theories. One such theory stands out. Dr. Terence Maiden has stated that the circles are caused by some hypothetical plasma vortices, which descending from above, press the notorious circles into the fields. This theory was given some credit, but as if in reply to Dr. Maiden's theory, soon after, some very complex shapes appeared, and this theory rapidly fell into disrepute. The most striking aspect of this phenomenon is that the crops are flattened with great precision. The edges of the circles are clean, as if drawn with an enormous compass. The lines are neatly drawn, as if a giant ruler had been used. The crops inside the circles are not damaged, snapped or broken. The stalks are bent down to a few centimetres from the ground and shaped into spiral patterns and continue to grow until they are ripe in the new horizontal position. Mostly, these patterns are in layers or follow a weaving effect. Various pictograms are aligned in a way compared to elements, appraisable only at great heights, similar to certain conformations of the soil, archaeological sites, and underground waterways. To all these elements which are noticed at first glance, we must add the result of the analyses carried out on the crops and on the soil taken from within the crop circles, on the energy fields present within the area of the pictograms and in close proximity of the same. These results confirm even further the anomalous nature of the phenomenon and its non-human origin. Magnetic fields with values 300% higher than those picked up outside the pictogram, which gave results on the order of 5 millitesla, were picked up inside the crop circles. These energy fields often influence the electronic equipment of TV crews who've been inside the patterns. Even the crops and the soil involved directly with the phenomenon manifest a number of anomalies which suggest that the action of some kind of a natural energy is involved. The soil tested has shown abnormal levels of radioactivity and the microscopic analyses carried out on the plants have shown heightened modifications on the molecular and crystal-like structure. In addition, spots caused by dehydration were found inside the plants. The plants also manifested different effects, depending on the period in which the crops were exposed to the mysterious energy that creates the crop circles. With young plants, the seeds do not reach maturity and die. In the plants which have reached maturity, the seeds become sterile. However, in both cases, the seeds are deformed. On the other hand, if the plants have reached maturity, they grow much more rapidly and become stronger and healthier than the others. The American biochemist Dr. Levengood, an internationally renowned researcher from the University of Michigan, has found that with young plants, the cells of the stalks have more visible nodes. The nodes are bigger in size and the stalks bend at a sharper angle compared to the plants taken from outside the pictograms. Dr. Levengood has examined various samples and has been able to reproduce the same effects by placing healthy plants in an ordinary microwave oven for a few minutes. Thanks to this simple experiment, he was able to prove the theory that the deformations found on the crops from inside the pictograms were caused by some unnatural force. The kind of microwave oven we use in the kitchen can reproduce only some of the effects seen on the plants. But the figurative component, as well as the mathematical, geometrical and symbolical elements, can only be caused by an intelligence capable of producing an energy wave 
containing a series of information reproduced on the soil of the pictograms. The engineer Colin Andrews was the first to present such a theory in 1998 as a result of outstanding findings made during an experiment carried out in Germany when a bowl containing distilled water was placed inside some crop circles. Later, when the water was examined through a spectrograph, it showed that the water molecules arranged themselves according to a pattern that reproduced the basic pattern of the pictogram inside which it had been placed. It was as if the water had memorized the data contained in the energy field that had generated the pattern pressed in the soil. In the photograph, we can see the disposition of the water molecules. All this gives us an idea of how difficult it may be to realize credible hoaxes. It is very unlikely that a faker could manage to create these patterns on a big field during the night, in the dark. If you then enter a fake circle, you realize that the plants are not laid down but broken. They are not bent, they are not deformed. In the fake circles, we don't have many chemical and physical anomalies. In addition to this, when some of the most complicated crop circles were analyzed, they turned out to be created with a very complex geometry. In fact, the English space engineer Roy Dutton has discovered that the spiral on which are laid down the stalks correspond to a precise mathematical model, which is repeated in all the genuine circles. What's more, the spiral inside the circle is part of a vortex in contraction, while the line marking the edge of the outer circle outlining the pattern is laid in the opposite direction. In various complex pictograms of the individual circles, the mathematical progression by Fibonacci, in which a number is the sum of the preceding two, was found. This means that the diameter of a circle is equal to the sum of the diameters of the two preceding circles. What's more, these particular formations are spirals developed according to the golden section. Certain geometric proportions were considered sacred in the past, and used in the construction of ancient temples, which gives a special harmony to everything realized following this parameter. In the 90s, some of the pictograms which appeared were real fractals. These diagrams are obtained by complex mathematical calculations, represented by a computer graphic, and show surprising analogies with the forms we know in nature. They are complex diagrams which are impossible to calculate even in small dimensions without the help of a computer. And the pictograms we are seeing are real fractals, not their representations. The first one appeared on August the 13th, 1991, near Cambridge, the renowned university where the founder of these complicated diagrams taught, the mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot. His very colleagues at Cambridge University stated that, given its perfection, the pictogram could not be a hoax. The Mandelbrot set itself is, as you know, a fractal, and it represents that state which exists in a, as, a, as a geometry recorded by powerful computers, placed together into a pattern. It represents a state, and that state is, uh, is the very boundary between order as we know it and chaos. But of course, you know, as we, the more we're learning about um, chaos, chaotic order is in fact a form of order. Uh, it, 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 it is a phase that order goes through, uh, which we call chaos. But the, the fractal represents the boundary which exists between those two states as they move from order into chaos and from chaos back into order. And I think it is very important that we do understand uh, what happens when order breaks down into chaos. 
The American professor Hawkins has established that the geometric relationship between various patterns contained in some pictograms is identical to the mathematical relationship existing between two notes on a piano. In other words, some pictograms are the figurative correspondent of a sound impressed on a wheat field. Other important elements have been found by Dr. Richard Hoagland, the known American researcher and NASA consultant best known for his studies on the monuments found on Mars in Sidonia Valley. He found that there is an astounding correspondence in the mathematical and geometrical components of the Martian monuments and archaeological remains found in the ancient sacred site of Avebury in England. According to Hoagland, the topographical disposition of these two sites on Earth and on Mars overlap as if both areas came from the same plan. After analyzing the mathematical and geometrical structure of some patterns formed on crop circles, Hoagland has found the same mathematical and geometrical components on the basic constructive project of these patterns, also found on the monuments in Sidonia Valley on Mars and in Avebury in England. It was as if the ancient builders had returned and given us news of it through the crop circles. Well, Richard Hoagland and myself have been in contact uh, for uh, maybe four or five years, uh, looking at the uh, not just the geometry of the actual crop circles, but their placement. Uh, he is particularly impressed uh, by the uh, precise placement of some of the major crop designs in the vicinity of Avebury. Their alignments and the placement of the crop designs with relation to that area in Wiltshire, England, uh, as an overlay onto the Sedona area of Mars. A correspondence based on tetrahedral geometry, which was considered sacred in the past, and based on its parameters, other famous constructions of ancient times have also been suggested, such as Teotihuacan in Mexico, the Giza pyramids in Egypt, and Stonehenge in England. In addition, the studies carried on the renowned pattern, mother of all pictograms, which appeared in England on July the 16th, 1991, indicate that this extraordinary formation contained all the mathematical and geometrical constants of the Sidonia plane, as well as being the Earth's bi-dimensional counterpart of the great pentagonal pyramid found in the Martian Valley. In addition, this pictogram symbolizes the principle of the three-in-one, that is to say, the divinity, as we can see in the corresponding esoteric symbol. And we have um, recorded accurately many designs, including Barbary Castle. There is no question that it is a tetrahedron, that its geometry does fit Richard's uh, uh, work. Having established that this is a real phenomenon, we now need to know what its purpose is. Once you have eliminated the hoax theory covering all of the phenomena, the one thing that you are left with facing you and it smacks of it throughout is that it's a message. We begin to see that there is information which is decodable by two routes. Numerous patterns formed by the circles and the cornfields are still a mystery to researchers, whereas many others have been deciphered and the message they contain revealed. This has been represented by astronomical symbology, common to ancient cultures such as the Sumerians, the Egyptians, the Celts, or to ethnic groups such as the Aborigines, the Dogon, or the Native American Hopi. Symbologies which have expressed real philosophical, esoteric, and spiritual concepts. The fact that the circle has been the basic pattern of the crop circles from the start of the phenomenon is not a coincidence. In all ancient cultures, the circle represents the oneness of creation. That is to say that behind an apparent diversity, there is an intimate link between all things. 
One of the first composite circles appeared in the county of Wiltshire on September the 10th, 1988. It belongs to the ancient religious traditions of the Celts. It represents a cross within a circle and it signifies the predominance of the spirit over matter. Subsequently, many more patterns appeared which related to the reinstatement of the contact between sky and the earth and the return of very advanced beings coming from the cosmos who were the masters, the instructors of great past civilizations. A most beautiful one appeared in England on July the 24th, 1992. A logos of the sun, a sun symbol which also contains a sign resembling the Sumerian cuneiform script. It is called Din Jir and it means the righteous ones with the heavenly chariots of fire. A symbol which was seen by the American Deputy Marshal Lonnie Zamora on the back of an alien spaceship as it landed in New Mexico on April the 24th, 1964. It reappeared in 1999 in a gigantic 300 meter long pictogram. The sun symbologies are most predominant in the pictograms, surely due to their deep spiritual meaning. On the night of July the 23rd, 1991 in Germany, in the vicinity of Grasdorf, one of the largest and most complicated German pictograms appeared. A few days later, a young man carrying a metal detector found inside the pictogram some metal plates impressed with the same pattern of the pictogram itself. In Germany, there are many people who are used to search for treasures with a metal detector. One of these seekers had the idea to walk into the Grasdorf pictogram and see what would happen. Inside the pictogram, he discovered three metal plates of 30, 35 centimeters in diameter. One of these was made of bronze and weighed 8 kilograms. The second was made of silver, and its weight, if I remember correctly, was 12 kilograms. And the third one was of pure gold, and it would mean a weight of over 20 kilograms. The pictograms and the symbols impressed on the plates are related to ancient German traditions. It recalls the Edda, the Germanic mythology. It talks about the golden tables of the gods that would be found at the end of the times. So also in this case we notice that there is a connection between the ancient mythology and the crop circles phenomenon. The passing of comets and other important astronomic events were considered by ancient cultures signs carrying great changes, purification. Even the crop circles have emphasized the importance of these phenomena. And, um, we have a these patterns have appeared many times. We have had representations of heavenly bodies, comets approaching the Earth. Many pictograms referred to the Sun eclipse. Indeed, they have enhanced the event. When the comets arrived in the fields, before four new comets were discovered, uh, we really did think that was pretty extraordinary. I mean, we had comets ahead of Waikataki, Helbop, uh, the Jupiter collision, uh, all of those uh, similar designs were appearing in the fields before they were discovered. This is a very important finding since it shows that the crop circles are not made only by fakers. They are not man-made because they could know nothing about this. The makers of the crop circles must have a knowledge that is greater than that of man. The historical analytical aspect of the crop circles has amazed all those who've studied this fascinating phenomenon seriously and without prejudice. It is increasingly difficult to doubt that they are not the work of man. The symbology manifests a message that is ever more immediate and urgent in this particular historical moment for mankind. We can only hope for change in the attitude of the mass media 
and the major institutions. But we obviously cannot be certain that this will happen. In the meantime, the pictograms continue to appear and to spur us on this difficult journey towards the future.